Margarine Jash. <laughs> Sorry. Hey everyone, I'm Abby Sharp. Welcome to another edition of my What I Eat In A Day YouTuber review. So this week I'm going to be reviewing Carolyn Dessler's new What I Eat In A Day Nothing Till Four Healthy Vegan Plus Workout video. A mouthful and there's unfortunately not much going in her mouth, but let's talk about it because this woman is doing both a vegan diet and intermittent fasting at the same time. I'm already feeling hungry, but honestly, it feels like every single time I watch one of these YouTubers videos, it seems like their window of eating just keeps getting smaller and smaller and smaller. Now, if you've already watched one of my videos on intermittent fasting, you probably kind of already know my sentiments here, but if you have not watched it, I highly suggest that you check it out right here to give yourself a little bit of a refresher. But after that, check this out. I'm gonna talk about her diet. So let's do this. It wouldn't be a vegan YouTuber's What I Eat In A Day video without the token green juice. And a big portion at that. Honestly, I'm all for greens. I'm so happy that she's getting her greens here in the morning, um, but it doesn't have to be such a huge, huge portion. And there's no fiber there when you have it in juice. Not to mention, like, is it four o'clock there yet? Because like, I'm not advocating for her to not eat anything till four o'clock, but the title says nothing till four. Stop lying, Carolyn. So that looks like a pretty awesome workout. I would totally be down for that, but I am not sure that I would have the energy on just green juice alone. And yes, there is some research to suggest that working out fasted may slightly boost your fat uh, burning potential simply because you burn through your sugar stores and then you burn into your fat but you can also burn into your muscle. Not to mention the research in this area is not that strong. And some studies have actually found no difference between working out fasted and not fasted. Personally, I know I do best with a little bit of fuel in my tank, just to give me some energy so that I don't burn out. And then I get home from the gym and I'm like super hangry and I just wanna put everything into my face. Uh, not to mention post-workout, you know, the best thing to do to, to really kind of fuel those muscles, to build that muscle mass is of course to ensure that you're getting some protein and some carbohydrates to refuel those sugar stores and to feed those hungry muscles. Not sure we're going to see that here with Carolyn either. So poor hungry muscles. So giving you guys a little body update. So yeah, I've been eating a bit more fat in the last few months and I have gained a little weight, but yeah, I feel amazing. That is all that matters. So I like that she's talking about her body in a positive way, even when it comes to weight gain. Um, and she's talking about the importance of eating more fat. And that's great because fat is awesome. Um, and you know, there's lots of great healthy fats, like things in like avocados and nuts and seeds, all of which are so important and beneficial to our health. They help support our energy levels, insulate our important organs, improve our immune system, um, great for cardiovascular health. So I like that she kind of threw that in there as well. I want a vacation. So beautiful. All right, so nothing to eat yet. Um, still just another drink. We've got some green uh, powder supplement in some water. Um, and I have no qualms about, you know, green supplements. They're a, a great way to kind of pack in some nutrition for those days where you're a little low on the fruits and veggies. But I mean, as we're gonna see when Carolyn actually starts to eat, that's not her problem. What I would love to see is her incorporate some protein and some real calories into her day. So let's take a look at what's coming next. Hey guys, so it is four o'clock and I'm about to have my first meal of the day. Ding, 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 yay, it's eating time. I am like more excited for her than she probably is. So let's take a look at what she's eating. Intermittent fasting typically means you don't eat for 
16 hours and then you eat for 8 hours. Whenever I travel to the beach or somewhere warm where I'm like tanning, going for a swim, and being in a bikini all day, I do like longer intermittent fasting. So I basically narrow down the hours of the day where I eat to about 4 to 5 hours. What? What? Okay, let's just like back it up here, girl, because a minute ago I was trying to give you some props for like not criticizing yourself for gaining weight, but now you're saying that on days that you wear a bikini, you purposefully choose not to eat? You purposefully choose to limit your eating to just four to five hours? The fact that you're saying that is so, so dangerous because now we have all these girls who are watching this video thinking that on days that they want to wear a bikini and lay on the beach, that they probably shouldn't eat at all. I'm pissed. So much stuff that, that's what I do and it works for me and it has a ton of other benefits. If you're looking to lose weight, to clear your skin, this is amazing food for you. Well, I am glad that it's working for Carolyn, but I want people to know that this diet is not necessarily for everyone. A lot of people cite things like headaches or difficulty concentrating or digestive issues as possible side effects. I mean, especially if we're just talking about eating for four to five hours in the day. Um, and so my opinion is that if you're hungry, your body's telling you something and the best thing that you can do is respond by feeding it, not by eating by some arbitrary rules that some YouTubers set up for you. Digestion as well, I'm a big fan of that and what I do when I go to hotels, I order the breakfast and then I just keep it in the fridge so it's nice and cool for when I'm back and have my meal and also at four o'clock I feel like I enjoyed my meal more because I've done something before, it's not like you wake up and you have breakfast and then you're all tired and stuff so I kind of feel like I earned my meal. Whoa, back it up girl. Honestly, food is not meant to be earned. This confessional here has all the markings and red flags of an eating disorder and I am getting seriously concerned as a professional. So what I do, I have a big fruit meal at uh, 4 and then I have dinner around uh, 7 and i show you my dinner later. So this is what I'm having. So I basically wow. always travel with a big Tupperware glass box. I just put this in my luggage um, or I have it with me on the flight. So I pack all the fruits from the breakfast in there and I also had a bit more. So I keep this in the fridge. It's nice, fresh and cold. I still have one green juice, so I'm gonna drink that first. And That's a lot of fruit and not much else. I love fruit. There's lots of vitamins, minerals and antioxidants that a lot of people don't really get enough of. But that's a lot of sugar and not a lot of fiber because especially she's choosing kind of like the lower fiber fruits there. She's got melon and banana and mango that are all just really high in sugar and low in fiber. Plus, where's the protein and those healthy fats that she was talking about earlier? I would love to see a little bit more balance here in her meal, especially because she's really not eating much in the day. Then I'm going to start having a watermelon because this is the fruit that digests the quickest. So you want to have that first. So basically you want to eat your way up, start with the fruits that digest the easiest. And watermelon is basically just 90% water. So. So yes, that is mainly water, but also like a lot of sugar and not a lot else. Um, and so when she was saying that you want to start with the watermelon first because of the digestive issues, there is some truth to this because when we fast for a longer period of time, we see our digestive enzymes slow or even halt in production. So the idea is you don't want to start like with a really big heavy meal. You want to give yourself a little bit of time to adjust to those meals, to, to build up those digestive enzymes again. So starting with something easy going like watermelon might be a good idea, but I don't really think there would be much of a difference in starting with the mango or the banana because all of these are really low fiber, high sugar fruits. And then I have the honey melon. So I basically eat all the honey melon from that bowl. Then I go to the pineapple, papaya and mangoes. And I'm also gonna have a few bananas. So I never count calories. I know you guys are very interested in it. So I'm gonna basically just tell you how many calories it has, but I never count it. And I just eat what feels right for me, seriously. 
I'm totally on board with that philosophy. Um, this is really at the core of intuitive and mindful eating, and I love that. I'm all about eating in ways that help us become our healthiest, happiest self. However, knowing Carolyn's super strict diet, I can't say that anything she's doing is particularly intuitive. I mean, I can't say for sure how Carolyn is feeling physically or emotionally, but I do know that being so vigilant and religious with your diet rules tends to take a psychological toll. I know I wouldn't feel my best on a punishing regime like this. In case I didn't say it earlier, this juice is celery, cucumber, lemon, ginger, and spinach. Oh God, more green juice. Girl, how much green juice can you drink? I mean, I love veggies. I want you to have all the veggies, but I would way rather see her like eat the cucumber and the celery and I don't know, I guess she said ginger or whatever else is in there, maybe with some avocado in there, some hummus to get a little bit of protein and healthy fats. Like switch it up, girl. You can chew. You got teeth. You got a mouth. Let's do this. She's done Oh my God, finally, the woman's having a little bit of protein and fat in those nuts. I'm happy about that. We got some omega-3s, we got some fiber, some protein, all my favorite things in one little packaged snack that's awesome, much more satiating than all the other things that I've seen her consume in the day, which is really be not that much. So thank you, Carolyn. I'm feeling a little more satisfied myself now. Dinner is ready, so I'm going to show you what I'm having. This is just pure greens, and, and I want to like wrap all the veggies in the greens, so I make like some little nice wraps. Here I got some baked sweet potatoes, again, no oil and no salt, some cherry tomatoes, some more greens, and some avocado. This meal is really, really confusing me. I mean, there's just a lot of carbs, there's no protein, again, we're missing out on the protein. I'm, I'm sad about that. Um, and one thing I really don't get is that she was talking specifically about not having any oil on her sweet potatoes. And I don't understand that because earlier she was talking about making sure she was getting more fats in the day. Uh, not to mention, a lot of people may not realize this, but fat is so important because it increases the absorption of fat-soluble vitamins. So really, it's a missed opportunity not to have a little bit of fat when it comes to your salads or if you're having a lot of fruits or vegetables in your meal. Girl, just throw a little bit of olive oil in there. Maybe just kind of beef it up a bit. It'll taste so much better. Not to mention, you're gonna get so much more out of your meal. So let's break down Carolyn's diet. Now, there is nothing wrong with a vegan diet or even a predominantly raw vegan diet like Carolyn seems to mostly follow. However, Carolyn's version is really, really unbalanced. She's getting about 50 servings of fruits and vegetables in the day and not really much else. There's not a lot of protein, not a lot of fat, and there's not really any grains or anything like that going in there. So I am a bit concerned because yes, fruits and vegetables are so important and the vast majority of people are not getting enough of them, but there's also so much value in getting a wide range of foods into your day, even if you are following a vegan diet. All right, so based on our nutrition calculations, Carolyn's actually getting more calories than she puts up on the screen. So we are estimating her at about 2,472 calories, where she suggests she's eating 1,850. It's possible that there are some foods that she just didn't include in the calculations, and that's where the discrepancies lie. But you know, in terms of uh, recommendations, for an active female at her age, the recommendations is around 2,400 calories. So she is doing pretty well when it comes to calories, despite the fact that she's not saying she's counting calories. As for her macronutrient distribution, things are really off kilter. So we are estimating that Carolyn's getting 73% of her calories from carbs, 20% of her calories from fat, and just 7% of her calories from protein. Of those carbs, Carolyn is getting about 303 grams of sugar. Ah, yes, a lot of that is coming from like healthy fruits and fruits and vegetables, but still that is a lot of sugar. She's also only getting about 47 grams of protein, some from the veggies and some from the nuts. But because she's exercising and doing intermittent fasting, I would definitely be worried about muscle loss or at the very least just like not optimizing her workouts very well. 
I did a little bit of extra research and I found that Carolyn does not like a lot of vegan processed foods like tofu, but there are so many other great sources of vegan protein like beans, legumes, uh, quinoa, lentils, and hemp seeds. Okay, so next I wanna talk about some inconsistencies in the video. So the video is called Nothing Till Four, but I'm pretty sure she was drinking green juice like sometime in the morning, and that has calories and sugar in it and is not necessarily allowed while doing intermittent fasting during your fasting period. Now, digging through some of the comments here, she, see, she was replying that she was jet lagged and it was noon in London, and she normally eats sometime between noon and two, but she was also saying that she only eats at a four to five hour window while on vacation. It's also confusing and it's really not making sense. Bottom line is it didn't really look like she was only eating in a four to five hour window. So that's definitely something to consider as a viewer as well. Also, this girl talks a lot about mindfulness and promoting mindful eating, but then she talks about earning her meals, which is definitely not mindful eating or intuitive in my books at all. I definitely would say this would not work for most people. And while Carolyn may feel great on this diet, I worry about the rationale behind this regime. To all my viewers watching at home, please know that this is not the only way to live a healthy lifestyle or live a healthy vegan lifestyle. You can put a bikini on and not starve yourself all day. You do not need to earn your meals. Yes, eating fruits and vegetables and exercising and going and laying on the beach and having massages, that is all great. But bottom line, balance and moderation is the key. So guys, I hope you enjoyed this review of what I eat in a day of Carolyn Dessler's video. If you did, be sure to give me the thumbs up. Leave me a comment below with other YouTubers that you want me to review. Subscribe to the channel and I'll see you next time on Abby's Kitchen. Bye.